we are. Uh, I'm ready to build a tunnel and I'm going to start cutting the foam with our hot wire foam cutter from Woodland Scenics and we're going to make a pattern and I'm going to explain this out to you real quickly. I've already cut down some styrofoam so it makes the video faster and you're not having to wait to watch me just chop up strips of styrofoam. So the tunnel that I'm going to build is going to be for in scale. Um, that's 1 to 1 60th, very, very small. But uh, the dimensions, I'm going to make a tunnel about 9 or 10 inches long. And I'm going to have my opening an inch and three quarters in width and about two and a quarter inches in height. These are my portal blocks. These are going to go on to the end of the tunnel. And we're going to cut uh, an opening about an inch and three quarters by two and a quarter. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. This is going to be like you saw in the introductory photo. This is just going to be a stacked laid back tunnel. We're just going to pancake stack it and come back in a, in a tapered mound. Uh, for this application, this is the easiest way to show you how to use the foam cutter and to start working your uh, your scenery with foam, glue, and hot wire cutters. Uh, you'll advance to a larger hot wire rod, to, to styrofoam saws, and things like that. But for now, we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to make some great shapes. There's, just with this application, there's more things you can do than you have time to. So this is a great, great journey. All right. My tunnel sides, each side, will stack three inches high. If I'm going to get my train in a portal at two and a quarter, my portal tops will be three inches tall. So if I'm going to stack, if I'm going to taper back, I want to be three inches high. I want to start with a three inch wide piece on each side so I can taper back about one inch on each layer as I meet to the top of that portal entrance. And I'll show you more as we go. So I have some pre-cut pieces, kind of explain it. The first one's three inches wide. It'll get a cut. The second one's three inches wide. It'll get cut and tapered back. And then the top one's three inches wide. And then whenever we stack our portal inside, see it's, it matches it three inches in height. And then this can cut, this tunnel can now cut at a tapered angle. So each side, I'm making three inches and three inches. Plus I come across three and a half for the portal. So uh, what would that be? Three, six, nine and a half inches in width, but it's going to taper. And then I have a couple of pieces I'm going to chop up and cut down to mound the top. So in essence, we're going to be one, two, three, four, five layers in total in height. So I lay this out on my board as we start to work with it. And I'll just set these pieces aside. I generally lay everything out with a number two pencil, all my marks and things, before the sake of the filming, I'm going to exaggerate and I'm going to use a Sharpie. You can use a Sharpie also if your eyesight needs it. It's much easier to follow. It just leaves a lot of black lines on everything that are kind of permanent. So we're going to rub the Sharpie together. Yeah. And hope for the Sharpie genie to pop out of the end of the pen. Well, maybe not. So let's take it. Oh, he did. Look at there. There's a Sharpie genie. Showed right up right there. All right. So here's the opening. Let's go over there and get an inch and three quarters wide. I'm going to start uh, actually my longer pieces. I want this tunnel to finish about 9 or 10 inches in length. So I'm about 10 and a half inches long here. That gives me some room to do some cutbacks and taper two directions to the side and from the front and the back. Here we go. Let's use my longer pieces. I'm going to separate them by an inch and three quarters. See? So here goes my portal front. So I need to have a cut in my opening an inch and three quarters wide, about two and a quarter inches tall. So, oh, and look there, that, that Sharpie Genie, well, well, Sharpie Genie, Sharpie Genie. I tell you, he has really saved us some time on the video today. Thanks so much for wherever that Sharpie Genie come out of that pen. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, let me just cut one of these portal openings first. You can see how I do that. I engage my on switch, let the wire heat just for a minute. I watch my fingers. Um, this is a pretty safe, so I say, let me check out my wires. Okay, I'm loose right there. That was loose right there. Let me check it out again. If you're not making good contact, this will not cut. Oh, like a charm. I must have had some shipping flux from when I brought my hot wire cutter over from the job today. Okay, my cut was a little bit jagged. I want a stone entrance look, and that's okay. I can clean that up. That looks to me like a stone cut portal entrance. That was really a pretty good cut. Let me try number two and see if I'm as good as it was on number one. Holding my breath, balancing off my belly, holding my right foot in the air, my jaw cocked to the right. Oh, messed up a little. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. And 
almost as good the second time, but not quite. Third time will be a charm. So you ask me why I'm cutting three portals. Uh, this is a margin of error because sometimes we screw up and if I screw up in the film, I want to have one we can just pick up and go and I don't have to stop the film and cut another piece and make a new tunnel portal and things like that. We've been having some mouse problems here in the model shop. So now we have some tombstones. When we find the little fellas, we can tell them the ultimatum or they can scat on down the alley. All right. So, see? Multitasking, multitasking. Okay, I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to make a cut with my hot wire. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to, you can lay out a pencil line, you can lay out a pen line, and I don't care if you do that or if you just, I'm just going to go with it. That's my style. I'm going to come in, I'm going to start my cut, I'm going to lay my filament wire back. Okay. I hope you're really getting a good view of this on the camera. I got a little tension on the wire, a little more maybe than I should. Got to watch that. We'll be up there replacing wire, slow down the film. We'll be all day making a tunnel. Then where are we going to be? All right. Okay. And I gently pop out of the end of it. Remove the excess. Well, let's take a look at what I've done. Um, I like it. I think it's okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to trim it up just a bit, right? Sometimes. Too much is not enough. Now see, I just roll my wire back and forth, back and forth. Dip it in, dip it out. Dip it in, dip it out. Roll it back and forth. Notch it a little bit, notch it a little bit. Okay. I'm rolling my wire back, pull my wire straight up and down. Now you watch when I take this off. Gently pull out of the end. Okay, I want you to see how it glided out the end. I didn't pop it like a fiddle string. You go to popping that wire, you'll be replacing it. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. That to me looks like the edge of a rock, wouldn't you say? Okay, so... Just for the sake of symmetry, and I'm in Oklahoma, Oklahoma is a symmetrical state. You see the right side, you run around and see the same thing on the left side. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm just going to give myself a mark. And then I'm going to give myself a mark and I'm going to go with it. This does not have to match. Most stones and rocks we see do not match. They're very asymmetrical. And they're very free form, very free flowing. And there are all kinds of mystery and signatures in God's creation of rock and solid surfaces and earth packs and things like that that we see in nature. And that's what makes them so awesome. You can drive for miles and miles and never get tired of seeing the landscape because it's constantly changing. Every square inch is something different. The landscape repeats but in its own pattern. All right. Um, I just like it. Okay, nothing to change. I like it. Okay, so here are my base pieces. I have a right and I have a left. Hopefully for the camera's sake, you're seeing a right and a left. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tunnel portals in. Um, I want to align these and make sure that they're both cut in the center. And in this case, they are. They very much line up. Um, sometimes you may cut one off to the left or off to the right. So you wanna really line them up. So when the train goes through, um, it has a straight shot. I'm gonna separate this the three and a half inch width of this block. And you can see my tunnel portals are cut one and three quarters of an inch apart for passage of the locomotive. This is a great passage for a straight on shot. If I was coming off of a curve, uh, I might open my tunnel portals a bit. And I think you'd understand that because coming around a curve, you might have a collision with the side of the tunnel portal and it might cause a derailment, and we sure don't want that. Okay, now, we need to layer our next piece of foam from the, from the ground up. How do we do that? It's real simple. It's a copy and paste. It's a line up and cut. I'm going to align my back two pieces of foam. And under normal conditions, I take my number two pencil and I would go at it. I'm still gonna go at it because that may be the line that we need to follow. I'm just scoring me a line on my piece of foam that shows where my bottom piece was cut. Not exact. I'm not going to follow every crevice and relief. For the sake of the camera, I'm going to try to do the same thing with my Sharpie pen. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, look at there, look at there. You can't see it yet, but when I pull away with my star foam, you're going to see something that really turned out spectacular. 
there's the outline of the bottom terrace, the bottom pancake stack. Okay, if you see the indention, I don't know if you can pick that up on the film, but if you see the indention, that's the pencil line. That's more the true line. The Sharpie pen was pushed away because of the thickness of the marker, so maybe for the film you can see on the Sharpie. Um, little child's play there. We're going to clean that up with a wire. No big deal. Okay, again now, I'm going to rotate my wire with a backwards cut because remember we're cutting upside down. So I'm rotating my wire backwards so my angle bevels to the middle of this mountain creation that we're working. You see how that works. And then again, we still have time to clean it up and make changes. Okay, I like it, I like it, I like it. Oops, I don't like it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, let me just clean it up just a bit. Okay, again, the way you cut with your wire is going to be your signature for your project. There's not a right, there's not a wrong. If you like it and people are complimenting you, you've done a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, I like it. I think I'm still I'm not falling back the way that I want to. I want to see a little bit more of a terrace action and I want to see a little more lie back in my styrofoam and my rock pattern. So I'm going to recut this right quickly. And basically, I'm just going to lay my wire back more intense. I think you saw me do that on the bottom layer as well. This wire is hot and it will blister you, so I'm really watching my thumb as it goes by me. This is a very safe tool to use, but you have to respect it. All right, let's see what we've done here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be the day. That'd be the day. What do you think? What do you think? Looking a little more like a mountain there. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I'm continuing to cut. And again, to match this up, I'm going to simply line up my back pieces of star foam. I'm going to line up my back edges. Whoop! Slickery, slickery. Big paws, little pieces of star foam. It's hard to manage, but we do it. Okay, and I'm going to go in. All right. Again, we want to rotate my wire backwards because we're cutting upside down. I'm going to probably stay fairly close to this pattern. I'm going to watch my paws because that wire is hot. Woo! Right? Sounds like bacon. Doesn't smell like bacon. And I'm just going to keep cutting the jagged edge. And as you notice when we turn it over, um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the look of where we're going. All right. We're starting to gain some clutter. Clutter is not always a bad thing. And if someone has the generosity to compliment you on your clutter, be sure and acknowledge their compliment. The cluttered mind is a sheer sign of genius. I believe is what Mr. Einstein said. So keep your project as neat as you can. Keep the trash out of your way as much as possible. We will have clutter. It's our nature. Embrace the clutter and make some art. All right, I'm going to cut a few pieces. Can I hear some music? Can we have the epic music, please? Oh, I cut so all of my viewers stay entertained with something besides my narrative of how to cut styrofoam. You can watch me cut this on out. I'll fast forward. Okay, I'm real, real happy 
with the way life treat me on this project. So I'm going to take my two larger pieces. I'm going to stack one like so, and I'm going to do some tracing. Do do do. You like my music better, right? Do do do. Do 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 do. Hey, have fun with your project. If you get too serious, this project will wear you out. You'll be throwing star foam like a madman. You gotta be careful. That star foam. This is. Dirty polystyrene. It's got some density to it. It'll knock you out, man. Um, quick, quick reminder, as we're going through all this and having a lot of fun, um, wear your personal protective devices. Um, check with your manufacturer on what they say is safe to cut this foam, if, whether or not you have um, need extra ventilation, respiratory equipment. Really watch that and really know what you're cutting before you just grab a piece of foam or spray something on your uh, layout that might harm you or might, might do... Um, some damage or make you sick or get a lung or, or a eye infection, something like that. That's not, it's not worth it. Um, always wear safety glasses. I know you can't really see I have a pair on. Uh, right? Do as I do, not as, do as I say, not as I do. How does that work? Um, if it says to wear um, a, a respiratory device, absolutely wear one. Don't fudge on this stuff. And make sure, make sure, make sure you always have good ventilation. Whether you have a respiratory device or not, Make sure you have proper ventilation and you're pulling these fumes away from you. We don't always know what's in this product. And we don't want to find out the hard way when some doctor gives you the news that um, your prescriptions are going to increase for a, a month or two or whatever. So just know what you're getting into. Um, it's, a, it's a fun hobby, but we're also using industrial materials. And we want to make sure those don't come back to harm us. And there are things that will irritate your lungs, irritate your skin irritate your eyes so just make sure that we protect all that you guys just gave us one set and we want to make sure that we use it well okay i'm just kind of cutting in some more reliefs as i stack up the top of my mountain let's see how it come out yeah i think i'm a little thick here on the edges so i want to cut some back Put the mountain back in place. Okay, I really like this rock. I'm going to come back in and again I'm going to cut back. Um, I don't want a flat spot on the top of my rock. I really want it um, relieved and detailed with some crevices and voids. Uh, if it looks too much like a plateau, uh, don't want it to look like we can park a bus on top of it. And I sure don't want it to look like um, one of the postal carriers can run one of their plane hoppers and put landing lights up there and be landing aircraft on it. So I kind of really want a rock formation or a solid surface mountain formation. So that's what I'm after. Still got a plateau look. So we're going to go in and I'm just going to make some top surface cuts and mounds back and forth, back and forth. Give some of the, uh oh, uh oh, fill string pop. Boy, watch that. You'll be changing wire. Watch those paws because, boy, this thing will burn you. Here we go. I'm just walking it back and forth. And we're just making some more striations like you see in God's great nature. Those are the rocks that he's created through the weather and through the time. Um, I'll show you a picture of a rock that I climbed when I was in high school getting ready to go to college. In stress camp, we climbed a boulder in Garden of the Gods. And it was the highest boulder in the valley. And when we got up there, we could see these crevices and reliefs. And that's where lightning would strike the rock. And it was so cool. To watch such a powerful force of nature meet such a powerful force of nature. And instead of making an explosion or detriment, it actually made art. And that's kind of what this reminds me of right here is the top of that rock. Um, this might be a little more creviced in relief than the rock we were standing on. But it still gives us an idea that it's the top of the rock. And we can always fill this in. And we can always make... Um, yeah, I like it. Okay. Obviously, I'm turning around. Okay. Okay, overall, um, I'm pretty happy with what I've built here. And, you know, this is taking us 15, 20 minutes um, to do this. Had I not been talking and working instead, I probably would have done it a lot faster. Unfortunately, I'm not one to work without talking. So, you know, you have to take me for what I am. So, here's how we're going to um, stop with our monument, as you would call it. And I'm gonna clean up my mess right quick, and then I'm gonna come back and, and we're gonna discuss taking this apart and getting ready to pin it to glue it. So let's go ahead and let me pin up my mess so I get that out of the way.